I don't know. Some of you have seen this. If you yeah, have taken this, this class really before, this is me. <laughs> a little me. What? What did you say? The same thing. Over. All right. Um, I'm gonna get back to the Lightroom, um, and I will start looking into some settings. Um, some quick settings because we are going to go from Photoshop, Lightroom to Photoshop and then come back to Lightroom. I would like to make sure that Lightroom is handling the files correctly when the files are moving to um, a different software. And um, that settings can be done um, by going to the preference settings. So I will go to Lightroom and Preferences. Really just only one, possibly two place that you really need to pay attention to. So File Handling, excuse me, External Editing, that is it. External Editing, that third one, External Editing, because it's the external editing software that is the Photoshop. And this is the area that you like to specify. If you like to have another set for specific purposes, you can create another set. But this is the set that Lightroom uses when you move the file from Lightroom to Photoshop. File formats, really either or. I tend to use PSD when I'm working, but when I archive, I have the TIFF version, Photoshop version, um, because sometimes slightly um, Photoshop version is smaller. Color space, um, the largest color space, I'm going to keep that. If it needs it, I can always come down to a smaller color space, but I always like to start with the largest color space. Sometimes, however, this color space for photo color space, RGB, it's so large that your monitor is not showing the entire color. And there might be some problem, um, but I don't really see that too much. So uh, bigger space, the better to begin with. And you can always bring it down for photo RGB. 16-bit. We talked about 16 versus 8-bit, um, and 16-bit contains more information. Again, more the better here. Uh, I would like to go for the higher bit depths. Resolution doesn't really matter. Um, this doesn't change the file size. It's just 240 pixels. Uh, it's, it's just assigning 240 pixels in one inch versus 72 pixels in one inch in this settings. It, it will not change any pixel numbers by changing the resolution. So you're not going to lose anything, but 240 or 300 is a standard setting. So if your output is the um, uh, print, inkjet print, then 240 or 300 will save your um, you know, one one step of going to uh, image size and then changing it. Uh, for those of you in 201, 202, I hope this is review because we looked at this. You just said it was <laughs> oh, good. So this is almost a, like almost word for word. I feel like what we talked about. Yeah, talked yeah, about. we did this in uh, 102, and then once you log in, well, I mean, because it just keeps the saving the information. Yeah, yeah. So yep. I think yep. you log in under right, right. And it just automatically saves. Okay. Also, another thing here, um, this is actually not about um, external editing, but preset. Um, because we are going to create a preset, or I will talk about making a preset, um, location of saving the preset is important. And I will make sure this is checked so that whenever you make a preset, it will be stored with your catalog, not with the computer that you are sitting on right now. OK? So check the location. Um, uh, check the store presets with this catalog. OK? 
Another place that I would go for in terms of um, workflow and um, from Lightroom to Photoshop, I go back to preferences and I'll go to go to catalog settings down in general. Go to catalog settings and in the catalog settings there is a general file handling and then metadata. This is where you would like to go, metadata. And make sure that automatically write changes into XMP is checked. This is extremely important. Means that whatever the changes made in either Lightroom or Photoshop will be automatically updated. You don't have to force it to update. So it's seamless in the background. So make sure to check that. What is, what is XMP? XMP file, XMP can be an information or the sidecar file that saves all the developing information of the raw files, um, including the keywords and then all the other things too. XMP file keeps the information Is of the, the raw. XMP and the sidecar are the same thing? XMP sidecar. This yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <clears throat> I don't think you should change it interchangeably, though, because XMP information can be written directly to the DNG file as well, too. Okay. Yeah. All right. Could you go back to the preferences external editing screen just for a second? Yes. Sorry, second. I'm going to go back. Oh, not that, that, not that one. <laughs> okay. Okay, external editing. This is the most important part. Yeah. All right, so that's that. Now, let me just go into, go back to library module and um, I'm going to go to import window just for a second. When new import, I think this came up um, in the first day of the semester. Um, somebody said, well, I apply all the information or sharpening information when I import it. Um, and it is a preset. <coughs> and this is available here. Apply during the import. And you can import the metadata. You can import the metadata uh, containing your copyright information. And also, you can apply all those different kind of information, uh, adjustment, development adjustment as well, too. Oh, there is a video preset. Ah. Anyway, um, so these presets that you are looking at, like for example, if you go to general presets, I can see auto tone, which I don't do. Medium contrast to curve, I don't do. I, I don't really do those things. But here, there is sharpen faces, sharpen scenic, and zeroed it means that everything would be um, defaulted back to zero, basically. There are predefined preset. Also, you can create your own preset. And that is what you like to do, maybe. You can, you can also buy all those presets out there, too. I wanted to ask about that. Is that considered cheating? I don't know why I thought about it. I don't website. think it is a cheating. cheating. That's, that's a utilization of what's out there. How, uh, and I, I don't find it cheating, but it's hard for me to find uh, presets that is useful for me. Oh, you mean buying? Yeah. So why would you buy it's, a I mean, you can create the preset. If you, you know what preset. you're doing, yes. Yeah. yeah. I, I tried to create one once, and I noticed that even if you do <coughs> use it, you, the preset, you can adjust it yeah. the way that you, you can like do that. Mm -hmm. so this way and then you can save that, that version. Preset. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you can save that version. The only one okay. that I do is I call it starting point, and then I have like remove chromatic aberration, like just the basic things that I want done. Why wouldn't you do the auto 
autotune. That's what I was curious about. You said you never do the autotune and all that. Or auto white balance. I started not to do that either in um, in my camera. I used to do an auto white balance, but I don't do that too no. because camera is fooling me. Camera is telling me to see color in a certain way. Auto tone or auto color or auto white balance will do a good job. But once you start to establish certain basis, and I would like you to feel that way too, I think you guys will have that basis too, to um, recognize what you're looking for instead of what camera tells you how the scene should be looking like. Does it make sense? So I just yeah. been shooting in the 4900 Kelvin. Yes. That's yeah. That's everything. Yeah. And then I always adjust it from there. I have the base temperature, the Kelvin settings, that is 4900. You can probably set it to 5000 5, K2. And then I shoot everything for that. And then um, that's a almost daylight balance. You would adjust it. And then after I adjust it, yeah, based on my 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 preference, oh, I don't do the camera's preference. Yeah, so, so try that. So you were saying that the, the, the forty nine hundred K is set in your camera. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. But even if you're taking like pictures indoor, wouldn't it be too dark? It will be really yellow. And you prefer it to be yellow than to be auto balanced? I will change it later on because that that yellowness is the native to that kind of light out there. The tungsten light is yellow. Yeah. So I know that tungsten light is yellow. If it is automatically balanced by the camera settings, then it feels like I'm I'm forced to look at the scene that way. But it was that color, so I would like to have that as a starting point and adjust it manually from that. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. So when you are, if you are, when you get into develop module in the right pane, um, there is a series of presets that is made, provided by Adobe, right? And then there is a user preset, which there is nothing because I haven't created anything. But um, I, if you like to have this, what Will is saying, starting point, um, things that needs to be done definitely in the, um, the Lightroom. There is certain things that you need to do before you do anything or maybe before you definitely go into Photoshop. Those are things like, I'm going to scroll down, relating to lens corrections, especially um, you are shooting directly from the camera, then it recognizes your camera, the lens, uh, the model, and the profile is provided or created by Adobe. If you like to create your own profile, you can do that too. Um, but um, it's, it's convenient to use what's out there too. So that's a starting point. So I check those two things, definitely. Those are the must things. I would like to make sure, remove chromatic aberrations. If there is any distortions, like lens creates certain kind of distortions, um, then zero it. Make sure that everything is all clean, and then work off from there. Um, maybe it has the, uh, the vignetting, um, then clean that. And then if you need your vignetting, then create your vignetting instead of using the vignetting from the lens. So those two things, um, before you do anything here, yeah, so those, those could be a starting point. Um, the sharpening depends, especially um, this picture is a scanned image. Um, unless you have raw files um, coming from the camera, um, the sharpening is set to zero. 
if you are dealing with raw files, the default setting is 25 amount, radius 1, the uh, detail 25, that's, that's, that it comes with it. So a certain amount is sharpened already. So if, if you're taking... I mean, no matter what. When, when, I, when I take photos and load them in, uh, I automatically say I, I'll put a uh, sharpening of 60, uh, radius of 0.8, uh, detail 25. I can do that from the preset? Yeah, okay. so if you like to have that certain preset that works perfectly yeah. for you, for a kind of work. So you can create the preset for landscape, preset for portrait. You can do that too because um, portrait versus um, landscape versus architectural pictures, maybe the amount of sharpness is different. So you can include that sharpness. And then you can go basically into presets and then all those things well everything is included right now of the changes um, or the change that I made was basically well say I would like to have the sharpening settings and then also lens correction settings those are the things that I would like to add to and then I'll say general um, a import um, that's good scan that could be a preset name and then I can create it and when you import it You see that, uh oh, uh. <laughs> you see that settings, general import scanned image settings. And then you, you can apply that. So that part you can skip. So you can start looking into creating the preset. Okay. When you apply during import, does that show up? Um, as like the first step in your history? That's a very good question. That is a very good question. I don't know. I've never done it, so yeah. that's why I was asking. I know. I'll take a look at it. Yeah, that's a very good question. What, what was the question? So the I asked, uh, yeah. when, like, if you applied something during import, would mm -hmm. that show up as like the first step in your history? Is this something you can go back to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's, that was my but question. Can, if I don't like it, can, yes. I, can I get back yeah. to the original? Oh, <laughs> uh, well, you could just hit reset and then it'll just zero it. Yeah, out. yeah, yeah. I bet. Because, like, I have starting point. If I ever reset that image, it even takes chromatic aberration out, it'll do T check everything. Yeah. And is that like when you've done like preset from import or is mm -hmm. that the yep. preset? Okay. Yeah, yeah, it'll just zero it out. So I'm going to start adjusting this one just very quickly. I don't have to go through all the adjustments, what I do, right? Uh, this is really random. What were you thinking when that picture was taken? Well, if I remember, <laughs> that would be really a lot of like memory. I have no idea. I remember that um, a poncho and I remember the place too, but I don't remember what I was thinking. <laughs> Looks like it. Yeah. No, uh, no. Before I become uh, wanted to become a photographer, I had other things I wanted to do too. So, like what? Like I wanted to be a vet. Oh, those little kids will think it's like I would like to be a vet because yeah. I like animals, right? Fuzzy animals. Yeah. Well, let's go to the, the to to like <laughs> look at the we are running out of time <laughs> all right so i white balanced i white balanced using the white balance selector tool i know that those are concrete walls ish kind of thing so it's gray so i'm um taking the reading from possibly most likely the neutral area of the other uh, picture which is the wall and after the, doing that, this is the um, the uh, the picture. Um, I will take a look at the histogram. 
Um, this looks, well, looks bright. Um, I have a highlight. This information must be the sky in this area, maybe other areas. It's a lot of brightness in here, but there isn't much shadow, real shadow information or blacks. So what I would do maybe to bring down the blacks, introducing the shadow information so that I know more of the contrast is um, introduced here. So I bring down the blacks, but not to the point where I had to clip uh, the in informations or clipped. So just before it gets clipped, right? Um, I start to have all those um, highlights around. I don't know what is causing it, but um, those things I could fix it later on in the Photoshop. Um, I wouldn't try to fix anything in here. If I get closer, look at that. It's like, I don't know if I'm happy or not. Why do, you, why do you say that you have highlights to address when I don't see the highlight triangle? Not highlights to address, but it's uneven development that I see. And it's an uneven development in the negative that edges are brighter. It's more developed. In this case, you won't just use a gradient to kind of bring it under. Instead, I might actually, if I would like to address this, I might actually go all the way down to go to effect mm -hmm. and do a veneering the, to darken it. Oh. Uh, 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 opposite. Yeah. That could, but I still have some problem. But that could um, evenly um, adjust the edges. I'm going to go back. Um, so basic overall adjustment to have enough information to work on. That is my goal here. So I'm not trying to perfect the image. I'm recognizing the, in, uh, info, uh, the problem, though, that maybe um, the sky needs, can be darkened a little bit. And then this highlights the, uh, the edges need, can be um, darkened a little bit. Possibly, well, I have all the informations, but um, yeah, I do have information, don't I? Um, I could try to brighten up slightly more of this area too, but I might do all those things in Photoshop individually. So all I'm looking for at this point, for the restoration purposes, um, I'm doing the overall adjustment. So, uh, yeah. Yes. A uh, question. I mean, you can do those in Lightroom. You're not talking about serious adjustments, at least with the brightening of the poncho. Mm -hmm. I mean, it can be easily done in Lightroom. Why would I want to take it to Photoshop if it's not some, if it's something I can do here? Well, it's it's just in brightening something is that simple. Then I, I, I other stuff. You can you yes you can probably do that a little bit too. I'm. I, I'm probably a little biased with using the Photoshop too, you love Photoshop, it, yeah. I think, um, because um, it, it comes easy to me. Uh, so yes, I, so I can open up the shadows here too. Mm -hmm. So I can op the, open up the shadows. Oh, use the brush. And then... You can dehaze it a little bit for the sky. <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I can bring down the highlights maybe a little bit too. And it's then a here too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just personal. Right, preference. right. right. Personal so preference. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. it's so. Not gonna affect anything critically. No, 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 no. So if you think you can do it in Lightroom easily and e that is easier for you, do it. I mean, I'm sure there are things Lightroom is just incapable of doing. But yeah, but do the it. Brightening, the darkening, yeah, yeah. The highlights. Yeah. That's easily yeah. fixable in Lightroom. You can do that. But, you know, I mean, how I understand it is that the reason to do as much as possible in Lightroom that you can is that you can keep a file in DNG format. Mm -hmm. Whereas, since this is a scanned image, this is already TIFF. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so there's... there's no compelling reason to keep it in, in uh, Photoshop. I mean, in Lightroom. Uh, 
that's that's a good、um, explanation which I didn't think about,、mm -hmm. <laughs> but that's a good one. But、uh, but but if it comes to if it it is easier to do certain things in Lightroom, I wouldn't stop you. It's the it it's included as an initial adjustment, basically. Yeah. yeah. So do it.、Um, it's up to you, really, how much you take it、um, to. But the thing that I would really would like you to do is chromatic aberration removal and the other、uh, profile correction, especially if you are shooting、um, if the files are DNG files. And then also I would do initial sharpening. That's another thing I would do before I go into Photoshop. In Photoshop, I might do more sharpening too,、um, but initial sharp sharpening, I go into、uh, one to one, and then just really a small amount, very much a small amount, and it needs to start with amount. When you hold down the Option key. And then you start to move the slide. It becomes grayscale, which helps、um, you to look at the true lines,、um, the contrast, because basically the sharpening is the、um, the contrast control,、um, changing the amount of contrast between the pixels to create the、uh, the illusion of the basically the. The sharpness. So I'll bring up the sharpness in certain level, and then also doing the same thing. Option, hold down, hold, holding down the option key, then radius. Then that would give me how the edge is sharpened. It's the edge sharpening amount, and often、um, the scanned image requires. A、uh, slightly higher radius number than the、um, the one what pixels. What's a high radius number? Like is it two, three? It's three. three it's three pixels. Three yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. But it's gonna so, start introducing so, halos, which you don't really want. So it's just a. I wouldn't probably go over one point five. What what does radius exactly do? Radius is、uh, looking for number of pixels that is、uh, the neighborhood of the pixels to look for a contrast level, basically. So if if you go to three pixels, it's more of the wide area that Photoshop Lightroom is looking for to、um, create the contrast. That's why it tends to create this halo-like effect. Outline, weird outline. Okay, are you talking about the where the sharpening is taking place? Right.、So、you see that white, white, bright,、mm -hmm. like halo-like things around、yes. my shoulder, and yes, then yes. yeah, that's what I'm talking. That's、uh, three pixels. When it, I think it shows better on the main screen as opposed to the side. Yeah, and then when I go to smaller radius, it's not. Just even one pixel, so it's less, and then two pixels, and three pixels, it's wider. So one, one and a half. Yeah, something like that. For scanned image, For scan、um, scanned image. If you go to、mm -hmm. portraits or those ones that requires、um, softer, like organic lines, then you. Don't really want to go higher numbers.、Uh, and digital, you're talking about. Yeah, yeah,、scan. I'm、Is、talking about. Digital, you don't want to go back up with the radius. Want to bring it down?、Um, well, I shouldn't say anything,、Not、but anything. yeah, no, like something、general. like yeah, portrait. Yeah. Now, I'm gonna go into detail. So detail is more of the overall. Texture, you see, and that is also、um, you really need to be careful with.、Um, if you have things that is very has a pronounced textures, this detail may be helpful. But if you are working with portrait, especially, I'm going back to portrait reference, you don't want to have a high number of detail at all. 
So nothing past say twenty five. Well, no again, uh, uh, yeah, most likely. Lower than twenty five. Most likely. Most likely lower than what? Twenty five. But I, it's 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 case to case by case really. But most likely, you don't want to amplify yeah. the texture right. because it's a skin. Yeah. yeah. And in this case too, I I I might actually push it slightly, but not as much. So if you take it higher, doesn't the noise and the yes, it it, it introduces the noise, and I'm backing off. I'm gonna back off. I want that masking. And then the masking. Um, if you like to selectively apply the sharpening, I'm gonna hold down Option again, and I'm gonna start bringing the masking. So let me just. Where the white is, I'm making a mask of 100. Where the white is, um, you, you see all the sharpening applied to. The black area, it's masked. It's like a mask in Photoshop. So if it is white, it has effect applied to. If it is black, then the information is hidden, and the effect covered. Is sharpening? effect of sharpening. Well, it affects where the sharpening is applied. Well, that, that sort of helped to get rid of the halo, didn't it? I don't know if I need that. Possibly. It's very subtle, by the way. It is very subtle. Well, so... On, on, the, on the poncho, there's... Like the body of it, there's no edges, okay? Like in the middle of the body, there aren't any edges, you know? Or is there shifting? Hair, you mean? It doesn't, yeah, it doesn't have edges. And then also, you can do an initial um, noise reduction. Mm -hmm. um, I am not a big fan of luminance noise reduction because that would soften things. But if you feel like you need to use it, you can find a soft spot of, well, softness, smoothness, and then also bring back the contrast. Will try to will help. Um, kind of create more of the definition of the uh, the edges, um, but I really do feel that that part um, is not something that I use often. So I do, do it do, really minimally. If you do use the luminance, you really want to bring back the contrast. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I've never done that before. I'm glad to see it here. The luminance? Yeah. I've only used it in like very low light situations where I had to use a high ISO and it had some noise. And then I would bring in a little luminance to bring down the noise. That's it. Okay. I, I, I actually never use the detail part. I don't see the changes. So all I do is to change the luminance, the noise reduction, actual noise reduction with luminance, and then also contrast to recover. Um, some of the softness that I lose. Um, color noise reduction is something important. I do see a lot of color noise in here, uh, but I don't know if I see it as a projection. Um, though the color noise reduction, usually if you go to 30 or 40, you start to really see. I got rid of it, yeah. All the speckles of colors are gone, so it's one color. So this is how much I do. Um, and again, ah, if you have a, if you like to straighten up things, um, transform. That is something you can also do too. It's like here, 
if I click on to auto, then everything starts to become nice and straight too. Or you can do um, leveling or uh, the, the, the vertical full, but um, if, if you would like it to, it can crop part of the picture um, and that may not be desirable either. So mm -hmm. that is really depending on what you like. Um, that transform you can apply in Photoshop and that may be a better idea too. Really? I've never been able to do it in Photoshop. Is that same, that transform, is that the same as the, because I use the, the level at the top to define the horizon line, is that sort of the same? It is similar, it is similar okay. that you're talking about the crop. Yes. And then mm -hmm. angle yes. it. Yeah. yeah. But there isn't really, I mean, this 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 could be a horizon line. Yep. And then I can straighten it. But it's slightly different. Okay. Anyway, so I'm happy. Most of the adjustment, initial adjustments done. And I am going to do more of the uh, the job in Photoshop. So I bring into Photoshop. See, I'm taking your time. It's after <laughs> nine for dinner. Mm -hmm. um, let me do very quickly here of the review of 50% gray um, exercise. So if you like to do uh, dodging and burning, 50% um, gray helped. Um, in order to do that, I'm going to bring out the layers palette in here so that you can take a look at it make a new layer make a new layer and then this is the button that you make a new layer i clicked on it and there is a new layer and then you can name it as you wish um uh, dodging or burning or uh, tonal um, that's 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 basically you what you're doing. Are you dodging or burning on the same layer, or is it better to do them two separately? Maybe it's better to do it separately too. Sorry, yeah. so you, said you can burning. do both. Um, you, you can you can try. Um, yeah, either or. It's it's your preference too. Yeah. Burning is darkening tones. What is dodging? Uh, dodging is lightening is the part. Awesome. Yeah. And then on this layer that is empty right now, I'm going to go edit, fill with 50% gray, edit, and fill. Once I go to fill, there are different choices on the content. You can fill with different colors, patterns, uh, history, black and white, but you're going to um, fill with 50% gray. And then say OK. Now, it is obscured with all gray, but you just need to make sure to overlay it with blending mode in the layers. So basically, I went to here. It says normal right now. Click onto that. Under blending mode, you go overlay. Where is blending mode? You said under blending mode. Um, it doesn't really say blending oh, mode. That's that, okay, that's what the window's called. Mm -hmm. okay. But these are called blending mode. Overlay. So that disappears. And when you have the gray um, disappearing, that's when you can start adjusting using burning and dodging tool. Burning and dodging tool can be found somewhere towards the middle to the bottom part of the toolbox. Um, it may be looking like this or this or this it's a sponge tool but you just hold down 
then sub menu shows up and you can choose either dodge tool or burn tool. I'm going to go for burn tool for now because I would like to darken this area a bit. So another settings that we went over was up here. Midtones or shadows or highlights. Um, I tend to work with midtones a lot. Um, even though you are working with shadows or highlights, I just keep going for the midtones. If that doesn't work, then I'll start changing to the certain tones that you're actually working on. Midtones are nice starting point, so it's not too dark or too light. Um, exposure, set it to very low. Very low means like I think 100% is the highest. So it's like the bottom 10%, right? That's, that's sort of like 10%. the, uh, that's sort of like the opacity. Brush. Your brush is opacity? Exactly. Yeah. Um, and then this, we do the exact same for dodging? Yes. Also and then and also low exposure right okay <coughs> and then I'll start to yeah looks nicer than the is it one of those things where the more that you go over it that it just constantly gets darker and darker yeah, yeah. Uh, until it becomes completely black okay so now Adjust it. And this is really, in, it's like you are brushing things. So it doesn't require a certain selection. It's easier. That's probably the, really the easy, easy way around. I can start maybe. Did you say anything about your brush? What? Um size or softness? Uh, the brush, when I do burning or dodging, I go all the way to hardness zero. And I tend to go for larger brush instead of small ones. Sometimes I only use the tip um, of the brush. It's, it's not circle, it's oval. Um, if you go to this settings, you basically you can move it, right? <laughs> so you can angle it, and then you can make it so that it has certain ovalness, and then use the tip. But you can always you can only use the tips for if you uh, like to if you like to go really subtle. No, but right you now use I'm just using. The tip in the middle? Right now, I'm I'm using the middle part. How are you deciding that? Because it's the whole thing. Can you use just the tip in the middle of the picture? That's uh, the no, no, yeah. so no. The tip Not in the middle. The yeah, sides. right, right, exactly. Okay. Yeah. And then it seems like the highlights not working. Then I can uh, because it's mid tones that is dealing with. Then I start to go to highlights and then see if the highlights can get affected. And it doesn't change whatever you did with that brush before? Right. Okay. What if you don't like what you did? Get rid of it. Oh, I mean, can you get rid of part of it? Yes. You can get rid of part of it. You know what I would do? Here, say, I didn't like what I did for this, the sky here, right? Then what I would do is I will select it. Oh, yeah. Right? Um, I will select it. I might feather it. I should have feathered it here, too, but I would feather it like 10 pixels so that it's soft. I will feather it and then fill with 50% gray, too. So it's gone. But those things that, I mean, I, I, I need to be softer edges. But you can get rid of it to bring it back to 50% um, gray. And how did you get what back you to the 50% gray part? I select the area. To do what? If, if you like to zero the effects oh, okay. that 
Well, yeah, I, would, I would you accomplish the same thing by painting with 50% percent gray? Oh, brush? yes, yes, yes. That is a very good idea. So if you have a brush, if you have a brush, and if you put the 50% gray, I, I, for some reason I can't reach the und down mm. here, which is my pro. Uh, maybe I should do that. Ha. <laughs> now, um, if I go in here and then I put 50% gray, it must be 128. No, 125. I think it's 128. 120. Well, it's only going to be more on. Uh, yeah. <laughs> And then here, you can brush it uh, with brush tool. What I mean, does that you do? just know the numbers for 50% gray, right? <laughs> yes, I do. Yeah, okay. You know why? You, you know why? So many times. No, because zero, zero is black, and 255 yeah, is white. That. That's a uh, eight bits. That's the numbers. 256 is the uh, the tones that you have for a grayscale. Yeah. Well, right, can anyway. You, can you use your history, though? I mean, if you're doing your brush and picking it up yes. and down, just, just... Yes, but if you're... If that history may be exceed, exceeding as well, too. I mean, if you go 50 or 500 five, uh, times yeah. over oh, yeah, already. Right. <laughs> if you're making, like, small... Yeah. Small clips, small yeah, brush strokes. So you're gonna you're gonna fill that history up. Yeah. And then after you are done, I'm gonna just say save. I'm saving it. File and then save. Basically, I'm saving it. I saved it. And after I save, I just save. I'm gonna save it again. I save. And then I should be back in the library. I have two images. This one is original. This one is adjusted. Now I have a question I forgot. So I have an image that I started working on in Photoshop, so I'm going to save it because um, I'm not going to get to mm -hmm. it yep. tonight. Um, but then when I open up Lightroom again and I Want to go back to Photoshop? What do I? So here depends, though. Um, I wouldn't start working in Lightroom yet. If you know that you like to go back to Photoshop and then do more work, do nothing in Lightroom yet. I know you might want to do more adjustment, but hold on, right? Hold on to it, <laughs> and then go to Edit, Edit in in Adobe Photoshop. This time, you are holding on to the adjustment that you like to uh, apply. You are going to open either original or copy of the original. And if you do that, you are preserving all the layers. Basically, this original or copy of the original, um, you think Original must be this one, right? Mm -hmm. But this is now original for for Lightroom. For for Lightroom, it's it thinks that this is original version of this edit version because it has a different name. It's going for the original of that. It's original, that yeah, that, yeah, it's the original of that name. Yeah, that file. Yeah, that file, the original, not not this one. This is a, this is this picture is originated from here, but then now this is a independent self. It allows you to yeah. stop, go back to Lightroom, and then go back to Photoshop and take where you left. Go on from where you left if you want to add more. Right more in, Photoshop. in Photoshop. In Photoshop, yes. So you're not doing that. anything. Right in if in Lightroom. Yeah. No. Right. I'm just saving. If I just save, right. I went to original, I go back to where I left. Right. Right. But now I already did do some adjustments, so what do I do then in, <laughs> in work in Photoshop? Uh, would you like to save the layers, right? Mm -hmm. uh, then forget about the Lightroom adjustment. So if she goes back to original, 
the Lightroom adjustments that she just added on top of the Photoshop are gone, and she goes back. Okay. But if she were to open a copy with Lightroom adjustments, it finds it into the, the, those, those Photoshop layers are So you don't want that. And, yeah. And you want to save those in one yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so for, I'm taking up all your time. Yes. Yes. Um, before you leave the bot, burning and dodging, yes. you real quick at the last minute added a feather. Yes. Where did that come from? Yeah, you confused who that one. Okay, that, that came from when you were trying to undo or, or or get rid of the adjustments that you made in the burning and dodging. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So on this layer, I was doing but uh, burning on this layer, but then there was a question how you can get rid of the adjustment I apply to. And one of the solution I presented was to select the area that I would like to zero. Mm -hmm. Select the area that I like to zero. I don't know if I like to zero that part, but okay. Right? Um, but I know this is a sharp edge because I yeah. forgot again oh, to feather. put the feathering settings. I can feather it here too, but I can feather this selection by going to feather and modify feather too. And I can feather 10, 10, 10 pixels didn't do anything. I'm going to go 60. And then um, I feathered 60 pixels around here. So it must be soft enough, enough hopefully. And then I filled the selected area with 50% gray to zero the adjustment around here, basically. Thank you. You're welcome. Anything else? Can you just delete? Can't you, the, the, the I, I, the I, uh, I wouldn't delete. I would fill with 50% gray. If you delete, wouldn't it go to white? Default to like clear? Yeah, which also would get rid of the information. But if you like to keep doing the burning, that layer should be 50% gray. So this is the easiest way to backtrack your steps if you want, don't like an effect that you're doing, a uh, natural burn that you don't like. Or, well, or another way that John presented, which I think makes sense more, is to get the 50% gray in the brush and then paint it over with brush. That would make it all. The wire and start over. That's another way. Yeah. yeah. The so there are many, many ways to go about it. It's really up to you.